Hello YouTube. Alright, we're going to rebuild my computer. I did a rebuild already, and I did have videos filmed of it, but I don't like this build, so I'm just not going to post them. But I'd like to see you guys to see them in the new case. It's a Cooler Master Elite. It was about $50. And it has built-in um, dust filters along this mesh here, which is really nice. I put up, it, didn't, it only came with one fan, which was here in the back. So I bought a fan off of Newegg and put a little fan there for the hard drives because it didn't come with a hard drive fan, surprisingly enough. My old case did. In here I have one IDE DVD burner, a floppy drive. That's about it. And from my old case, I transferred my little uh, screen door material filters. These things really help with uh, big dust. Because that's where the CPU draws air in. Now let's take the cover off and take a look inside. Now the metal bows a little bit on this thing for some reason. So let's just observe what we have. Now, as you can see, this dust filter is an asshole and won't stay on. Derp. Alright. Whatever. Anyway, here we are inside this lovely case. The hard drive design is toolless, which is really nice. Basically, you just do this. And the hard drives fit within these uh, little things. And I have to take them out anyway, so I'll leave that there. I have a Linksys wireless end card in there for, you know, wireless internet, in case I can't have access to wired. I have a sound card in here that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. I have a TV tuner card, which is a PCI X1 slot card. And my trusty... Uh, uh, PNY NVIDIA 7600 GT. This card has been a champ. I've had it since 2000, 2006. Yeah. The stock AMD cooler I got with uh, my AMD Athlon X2 4800 Plus, which was a 939 socket. The current one in here is an AMD Athlon uh, X2 6000 Plus, which happens to be 3.0 gigahertz. Now these stock AMD coolers are actually really nice. They get the job done very well. They have nice and tall. Intel's ones are utter balls. And I'll show you why in a second. So we're gonna unplug everything from the motherboard. You know, I'm gonna turn the lights on. That's better. First, of course, we have to unplug every single hard drive. And most likely take them out. No, I will take them out. <laughs> And the motherboard I have in here is a Gigabyte, and is one of the only Gigabyte models on Newegg to have an AMD processor and an Enforce chipset, which nowadays is garbage, as I've mentioned on certain forums before. Um, I have a, an Antec power supply. It's about four years old as well. It's a True Power 2.0. This power supply is awesome. Antec nowadays is meh. The best, the best power supplies to go with nowadays is probably Seasonic, Corsair, and Ultra. And I'm going to unplug everything and get back to this. Be back. Remove the cards so you can see them better. Now what I had in this was, this is the NVIDIA GeForce. I don't know if it's GeForce actually, but it's a 7600 GT. Made by PNY. This card has served me very well. Absolutely love it. It's lasted me for four, four years. What else did I have in here? Here's the Linksys Wireless N PCI card. It uses Rylink, RA Link, Rylink um, chipsets. So they're supporting Linux out of the box, which is nice. I have an Avermedia TV tuner card, which is hybrid digital and analog TV. So you can do it in either situation. It takes a PCI X1 slot. Some USB headers and some unused Firewire headers because there weren't any on the past couple boards I've had. Best sound card you can buy. A Sound Blaster Live, one of the original ones. This card is from the year 2000. It was assembled in Singapore. It's loaded with capacitors, which is a good sign. The cards that usually have more chips on them uh, tend to sound like crap. The ones with actual analog filtering with these capacitors sound excellent. And this is the sound card I told you about uh, 
Tim from the Osgoovy Show. This is the one I told you about. This card makes everything sound awesome, and it's supported in Linux out of the box, so you wouldn't have any problems there if you decided to get one. <clears throat> now, if you take a look at this board, it's still pretty much brand new. It's got two PCI slots, one X1 and an X16. So, it's a mini, it's a mini uh, ATX board, so it's not, you know, has doesn't have a whole lot of features. It only has two RAM slots, which are occupied by two one gig sticks at the moment. Um, this is the IDE header I'm gonna pull out. Now I'm not using a static guard because if you touch the power supply and ground yourself every once in a while, you'll be fine. Let's get the RAM out. Which is pretty typical. As you can see, the core is very close to the RAM here. It's kind of strange. Now I'm using A-Data RAM, which is some of the best RAM you can buy nowadays. But if you're planning to overclock with RAM, I would stay away from A-Data for that purpose. If you're going to run stock, A-Data is perfect. If you're going to do overclocking, I would suggest Patriot. Patriot RAM is excellent. Um, i got these four hard drives here, which I'm going to pull out and show to you as well. And here are my hard drives. I have a caviar, a one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black. These are some of the best drives you can buy on the market today. They're excellent. I have a second one of those. You know what, I'll just put them here. I have a second one of those. I also have a Western Digital Caviar Green drive, which is uh, 32 megabytes of cache. Now these drives say that they're uh, 5400 RPM to 7200. They're 5400. Don't make any mistake about that. They are terrible OS drives. They are excellent storage drives. End of story. And this is the oldest hard drive I have. It's a Western Digital Caviar RE. The original RE series. It's a 250 gig drive. I've had it since 2005 and it has no bad sectors and nothing is wrong with it at all. Champ of a hard drive. I still use it now. And those are the hard drives for you. And there's the fan I mentioned earlier. You can better look at it. It's a mass cool fan, which I've put here to bring air in to blow in the hard drives a little bit so they uh, have some better ventilation and aren't, you know, burning to the touch, which, you know, uh, it's not bad for them, but it can affect solder on the boards of the hard drives, which is never a good thing, ever. So keep your hard drives cool for the sake of not melting the solder. Yeah. All right, now what we have to do... So unplug everything. Unplug the audio headers from the board. Unplug the CPU fan, of course. Uh, unplug the power for the entire thing, which is a little bit of a wrestling match. Ugh, there we go. Big old power connector right there. Unplug the connectors from the, D from the DVD drives. Basically, I'm trying to aim so that I can move all these wires out of the way. Move the floppy cable out of the way as well. All right. And of course, we just grab all these wires, pull them out of the way, and get this IDE cable out of here. And here we have access to the board now. Uh, yeah, we take the front USB headers off, and of course the stuff for the PC speaker, reset button, power button, etc., etc. I wish it just took one big plug for that. I really did. Uh, t Tim, I've seen your videos where yours is just one big plug. I need to get an adapter for that if I can. So if you could point me in to an adapter, two adapters, uh, anybody actually, that would be great. Now this is an AM2, this is an AM2, AM2 Plus, and an AM3 Ready motherboard. So. This motherboard I'm going to keep. This is an AMD build I'm going to keep and put in another case as my secondary machine and get rid of the Dell that I'm probably going to show you in another video. But as you can see, this, these Gigabyte boards are pretty solid, but the chipsets on them have started to get a little meh as of late. And I happened to get the one board that uh, was kind of a piece of crap. And it didn't have a lot of features that I wanted because it was a micro ATX board. 
what's in that box over there is a full ATX board that you'll see in a while. All the cap, all the capacitors look great on here. Nothing bad, so there's no signs of early failure. I'm not even going to take the heat sink off of this thing because I'm just going to use this processor again. So we're going to just unscrew that and pull it out. All right, I have the board out, and now it's a very naked computer, except for the power supply, which I'm going to keep in there. <clears throat> and here's the old motherboard. Look how tiny it is. Very small. I'm going to put that back in its. I'm going to put this back in its box until my other case and stuff come, and you'll see a video of that as well. And what'll be nice about this is I'll have an Intel build and I'll have an AMD build, so I'll have both sides of the playing field, which will be excellent. Mess of SATA cables. Anyway, let's move to the box. I got a box the other day, which this box should go in. Of stuff. Mysterious white box. What the hell's in here? Bubbles. And thermal grease, Arctic silver. Definitely some good stuff to buy. And apparently, uh, uh, I don't even know what this is. It's a StarCraft II trial key. That's useless. Whatever. Why would I want a trial key? Alright, I'll put that there. Right, and we have, yes, Tim, you can cringe now, an Intel Pentium dual core, which is it takes the LGA, LGA 775 socket, which is a pretty solid socket. Now, this processor was about $70. It's cheap. It will get me by until I can upgrade to something better, if I even decide to upgrade from this thing. You can see the stock Intel fan in, around in there, and I'll have to talk about that at some point as well. And related to that is a CPU cooler, an actual good CPU cooler, and one of these mass cool things. A friend of mine has used these in a number of builds, and they've been quite reliable, as far as... Uh, He's told me, so I plan to use this. If it dies, I'll buy another one. It's different, I guess. And, of course, I got an EVGA GT240. 512 megabytes of DDR5 is on the chip itself. And we'll put that aside. And we have yet another box over here that I have yet to uh, open. So we'll open that as soon as I can find the scissors. Which happens to be... There we are. Now, in, the, in this box is the motherboard that I ordered that I really want to show you guys. So, you know what? I hate when boxes are stubborn like that. And here it is. A Gigabyte P43 ES330J. Takes Intel chipsets. It can take Core 2 quads, Core 2 duos, and probably the pen and probably the Pentium uh, dual cores, since it's the same socket anyway. Three years of warranty, has dual bias. Uh, the, the Intel Gigabyte boards seem to be fantastic, but the uh, um, the, Intel, the AMD ones seem to be a little flaky. And this is a full ATX motherboard. We're going to put that in here. And first to do that, we have to reset the standoffs in the actual motherboard, so we probably should take all this crap out and put it back in this box. All right, and these, of course, are the standoffs. I might just even use new ones from in there. So let's do this thing. <laughs> 